When we are going to take a cast, we need to understand what it is we are trying to achieve. We need to focus on alignment, stiffness and force pattern. Each phase of our assessment, we need to remember these three things. They are vitally important. When thinking about alignment, we need to remember patient diagnosis, heel height, range of motion at the ankle, the knee and the hip, paying special attention to the ankle, and your casting block height must match the position the patient's ankle can get into. When thinking about strut stiffness of the device, there are multiple points of interest that we need to pay attention to. These are very important for us as a manufacturer. When thinking about the product itself, we need to factor in its shell orientations, i.e. where its composite shells will be and how they act on the body. We need to think about the strut stiffness, how stiff or how flexible is it going to be. We need to think about the force patterns we are looking to apply. Are we using a, a composite shell or are we using a strap? We need to think about the foot shell. Is it going to be a high dorsal wrap or is it going to be a low cut foot shell? These all influence how the force patterns influence the device. Right, so we, I'm going to assess you now for the casting of a spry step vector AFO. I'm going to work my way through the form. That's going to need me to put hands on you and feel your range of motions in your ankle, your knee and your hip. I will ask you to perform various movements so that I can gauge your strength or your weaknesses. First on the list is uh, your shoe. Is it okay if I measure your shoe? Right. right, we have a 20 millimeter heel height which I now need to record on my form and then adjust this pitch board accordingly and that is the position I will cast you in. I'm now going to see how much range or lack of range there is in your foot and I can see we've got some tone kicking in with your leg extended and I can see the foot is adopting an Aquinas position where it's inverting and it's plantar flexed. I need to see if I can correct this with the knee extended and I can see there's large amounts of tone. You've just told me about a special trick which I'm going to try. So I have dorsiflex the third toe and the foot has completely relaxed and is in a plantar grade position. The first ray is slightly plantar flexed but is correctable. I will remember that and I will then check it when I do your standing assessment to see if you can actually return to the plantar grade position. I need to consider this because the final device is going to be designed with, your, uh, with you walking. I need to be able to replicate your walking position. So this is important for me because I don't have the strength to uh, dorsiflex your foot, but when you stand, you may be able to improve that position through your own body. Could you stand for me, please? Right, so there's a, just put some weight on there. Right, so there's a clear indication of a couch assessment and a standing assessment being difficult. I could not get your foot into that position with your knee extended in a seated position, but as soon as you stand, you can get your foot flat on the ground. Mm -hmm. So I know now that I can cast you in the position that I've measured your shoe to be, and everything will be okay. The shape of the underside of the brace will mirror your shoe, which is why I've done this. If for whatever reason your heel came off the ground, I would need to accommodate the pitch block to to mirror the position of your foot, yes. So in that instance, I would probably have to raise that up to accommodate that. All right, thank you, you can take a seat. I just wanna check the rest of it. Okay, so just checking your 
your knee range. So you've got full range of motion. All right, just relax. And then can you kick your leg up for me? All the way up, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. So we're slightly short of full range. And I'm going to push down, resist me, please. Okay. So I would record that score on the back of the form. I would do the same for the other side as well so that I have a comparison and record that as well on the other side. Let's just do your foot again. I'm going to try and push you up again. All right, so you've definitely got some plantar flexus firing there. Can you lift your foot up for me? So you would have a flicker, so a muscle power of one, but you do not have the range. Okay, let's just pop your foot there. Can you lift your knee up? Okay, and hold for me. Okay, that would be a muscle power of three plus because you are able to lift it against gravity and I am able to push down and you are still somewhat able to resist me. Just to finish off your muscle power assessment, could you please stand for me? Are you able to do a, uh, a heel lift? Okay, and down. How many of those can you do in a row, please? Okay, now that's fine. From that position, are you able to keep your leg straight and push your leg back? Excellent. Thank you. Please take a seat. All right, and the last one is your hamstring. Can you please pull your heel towards the chair? All right, resist me. Excellent, that's very strong. Okay, that's great. All right, we are now ready to cast.